ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and my wife in the other bedroom, it is now time for Jeremy's Pedal Power Hour. This is the time where I get to interview and talk to and just hang out with some awesome uh, mountain bike YouTubers, pros, whatever. It looks like I'm running it, but you guys are completely running the show. So make sure you guys ask some questions and uh, get to know my special guest on tonight. You all probably know who I have on. It is Kevin from Steady Spin. What is up, brother? How you doing? Uh, just get, getting in here after a good weekend of riding and uh, happy to be here on the live stream. Awesome, awesome. Well, like uh, I've said, everybody, I have Kevin on. Get to know him. Ask some questions. Um, what, how this works is if you ask a question and I'm talking, I will completely cut myself off and will ask your question. If Kevin's asking or talking, of course, I won't uh, um, cut him off, but... So, uh, Steady Spin, uh, start off, I've actually wanted to know for a while, uh, obviously Steady Spin comes with wheels and all that kind of stuff, but where did you get the name uh, Steady Spin from? So actually, um, we were sitting around chit-chatting about what a team name would be, and I was like, Spin Steady, because in road biking, it was all about like having a steady cadence, and that was what like really, it, like endurance is all about, so it was being very steady. Um, and I was like, spin steady. And then, uh, Seth was like, how about steady spin? Cause that sounds a lot better. And I was like, all right, let's do it. Spin and steady. Yeah. Steady spin does sound, sound a lot better. So was, yeah. was there a team? I mean, when we've met, I've seen the whole steady spin jerseys you've worn and everything. Is that, was that your team jerseys and all that kind of stuff or? No, that came all from the mountain biking side of okay. jerseys that you've seen me wear. I was a road biking team. In South Florida. We actually yes, got that's a, right. We actually got a worst from USA Cycling, best up and coming team. Yeah. Um, won some races, won some series. It was uh, it was fun. It was actually just a, a way that the community could come together. We could train together. And, yeah. And just a, uh, the doors open, open seat policy for anybody that wanted to come ride bikes or be part of riding bikes. We have a very diverse team. So road biking. Uh, obviously, you're now known in the YouTube world for mountain biking. Is is road biking still a still a hobby of yours, or is it completely gone? Uh, it's pretty gone. I feel like the risk you have on the road bike on the road is just so crazy compared to mountain biking. Like after you quit road biking, you'll realize that you know you don't have to think about dying all the time. Yeah. We're like getting hit by some car or something going on. So I actually sold my road bike not long ago. I had like a really nice S Works tarmac, and I sold it for fifteen hundred bucks. Carbon wheels, full on. It was super nice. One piece carbon bar, power meter, everything. Wow. And, uh, I'm just glad I don't have it now. Have you thought about uh, getting into um, the world of uh, gravel, gravel riding? So I actually have a gravel bike. So yeah. um, I. I've done some of it. I actually think I could probably do a lot of the riding in DuPont on my gravel bike. So I'll oh, probably be doing some more of that. Like maybe some like 40 millimeter tires or something like that. Just, yeah. I probably could do a lot of trails that people do, really. Not you know, like some knobby tires on there, but just like basic trail, nothing like all black. Yeah. I might be just fine. Yeah, so I just we'll recently I just recently got a gravel bike and I've thought about doing that but haven't really Really kick that in. Anytime I want to go ride, I'm, I'm on my mountain bike. So Aaron Klaus, I'm sorry if I butchered your last name. Uh, just curious, Kevin, have you become a hired hand for Alexander uh, and Seth? Uh, would be cool because I think it would give you some great content also. So are you a hired hand for Seth and Alexander? I have been hired to work at Burn Peak. Yeah. Uh, to do some camera work or just be a character on the show, this, that, and the other. Um, I hope I do get to work more with him in the future. I've just known Seth for so long. You know, I, I know Seth from way before we did any YouTube stuff. Yeah. Um, or he didn't do – I'm way late in the game compared to him, obviously. So on the times I, I can help out, I try. If there's a possibility, if they can catch me on a day that I'm not working, yeah. um, I will fill in and help. I haven't done any work for alex but i have been working for seth uh 
just the, the time, you know what I mean? Like as That's much awesome. as people think YouTube's uh, it, it's paying the bills for them, but it's very far from paying the bills for me. So <laughs> I actually have two other jobs. So yeah. when I can help, I love to help because you learn so much from people that are already doing it. Yeah. That like it's the small tips about certain things and um, it's beneficial for everybody. You know, sometimes very rarely, but I'll teach them something That's or have cool. a different outlook, you know, brainstorming and being creative. So how does it make you feel having a, a, a pretty popular, um, jump on that trail named after you um it's a pretty good jump i mean i wanted to make it and build it and now i've yeah. actually got into uh doing some trail building for a company so i do that part time and i work at a camp the other the other half of the time for kids and i feel like i just see things so differently now that i just want to go i want a giant like truckload of dirt and i just want to go i just want to go just just beautify that whole situation um <laughs> I remember we made that jump. It was, it was really scary. And now you all, I walk up to it. And I'm like, ah, oh, this isn't that bad. So I think it was the, uh, the what made it so sketchy at first was there's no run up and we kept on pushing the burn back and pushing it back and pushing it back and pushing it back. And, uh, at first it was super scary because you really didn't have enough speed for it. Yeah. Like you just didn't. And you were just full of hucking it. So it's pretty cool to have a jump on like one of the most, like the most, well sought after known trails for mountain bike in the YouTube world. It is cool to have a jump name back for me on it. So that's super cool. Now you've done a, you told me earlier, uh, yesterday you've been doing a lot of, a lot of trail maintenance and everything. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the new P 90 X trail mm -hmm. building exercise. You've, uh, Oof. you've, uh, you've really gotten into good shape from doing it i guess yeah look at that look at that feminine figure it's it's amazing the chin the the edges it's <laughs> um yeah you want to you want to learn something about trail building uh go sign up for a company i signed on for like a six-week project for trail yeah. building and you do handwork behind the machine and you're gonna lose some weight you're gonna, you're gonna learn some things about that dirt that's for sure so that's awesome i think it's the best way to learn anything is if you want to learn something go do it like that you just on the job training is better than anything and then when you're on the job training it's like a paid internship or something you want to learn how to do which yeah. you can do part-time i think there's less people out there putting in hours like they could you know an extra 10 hours a day a week is nothing to learn something you know if you really want to get after it so do you think you're more into uh trail building now that you really started doing that or you still really like because you know you know you got you got seth over at uh, backyard trail builds and he's yeah he does more uh, building than he does writing. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I'll ever be that way. I think it's very important. What I was, what I was came out to figure out is I wanted to, figure, I wanted to learn yeah. how I could contribute back to doing trail building and writing trails that people have done and they need some maintenance and stuff like that. And now I really can show up somewhere with a shovel and a rake and a road hoe, and I could really fix some stuff like pretty quick because of the volume. Because doing it commercially, a lot of people burn or build like a berm or like a part of a berm and then like a roller and then a table one each day yeah at this job you're banging out two giant 180 degree Dang. berms three or four rollers two tables every day wow like every, every day you're just pumping that out depending on how trail you're building so um i think it'll be, it'll be very valuable either way and i think it will actually give some more content to my channel yeah so that uh, I'll have different content. I will have some content coming out about trail building and uh, raking dirt and like some time, some cool time lapses and stuff for sure. Sweet. Now, Mar uh, Marty Richards, aka Octodad, MTB Octodad. is Octodad trail building. I don't know if he's related to Octomom back in the day. Um, is trail building a career or hobby? Uh, I I don't know if he's referring to like uh, what you're doing, but uh, uh, these I big think guys. <laughs> I think it is a career path for some people. Um, it depends, you know, every job has a, a lot of moving parts to it. So depending on what you want to do with the trail building or where you see yourself advancing to and doing, I see myself moving more into the sales project manager overseeing thing because yeah. that's what I have the most experience with. Yeah. Um, is being a project manager and a salesperson. So uh, being a machine operator doesn't sound bad. But I think long term, sticking with it, I will probably be project manager sales, just kind of like QC, making sure productivity's up and profitabilities are up. And, yeah. you know, I don't mind throwing a shovel and showing out there. I think the best leadership is showing that you'll do it too. And, 
it would be um i'm always up for a good hard work physical labor challenge with somebody to show them that you know even the boss guys are willing to put in the work and do it because everybody has to yeah so that's super sweet well there's a plug-in for all trail bosses you guys do some awesome work and everybody out there that sees this get out there and help out with some trail building um so mountain biking came from road riding a roadie what major that i know you've posted on before about it but for people who don't know anything about you where did you where did you come from mountain biking to uh, a roadie to mountain biking where did you where how how'd that transition happen so i was a road biker down in florida because i was in a location which the roads were all like 35 miles an hour mm -hmm. and, and like on the beach a1a yeah 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 so it was really safe to do it. I mean, I don't want to say it was really safe. I felt safe on those roads because the cars weren't going that fast. Yeah, yeah. And I would do all kinds of weird training. I would go train because there was no hills, and I would uh, bomb parking decks. Or there's a 17th Street version in Fort Lauderdale. And if anybody out there is, is a road biker, I challenge you to do a five-circuit lap on the 17th Street Bridge going under and over five times. And see if you can take that KOM because I still have that one. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> five laps on there. I would, uh, yeah. I would go down and work in my cornering and I would shoot down that bridge. And I would go all the way to the left hand turn lane yeah. and just lean into the turn at like 40 miles an hour and then swoop uh. right underneath the bridge. And that's how I got the times. I would just bomb off and I would go around a corner on those little tiny tires at like 40 miles an hour. That's awesome. Um, open challenge. So when I moved from Florida, this, the riding conditions weren't as safe. It wasn't the same thing. It wasn't like the same type of vibe and energy and people and all this other stuff um, because it was kind of like a shit show, short of better words in Florida, because everybody thinks that they're hot shit and everybody's pressing the limit yeah. and everybody's pushing, pushing, pushing. And I like that kind of adrenaline. Um, but then they didn't have it when I moved to Georgia and Seth got a mountain biking and I was like, oh, I'll check it out. And then the single track sampler brought me to... Uh, Bailey Mountain Bike Park, and then I started riding more and more. And I I just started progressing a lot faster than other people. Like just, yeah. I like the fact that the mountain bike can scare me. It I can go into a, a hairpin turn on a mountain bike at five miles an hour and scare myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, because it's like huh. the feeling of getting bucked off the bike at five miles an hour isn't much different than twenty miles an hour, really. And you lose your balance and you're like, oh, and you know, it's like. <laughs> You know, you don't have to risk your life to, you know, get a little thrill on the mountain bike. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, that's cool. That's cool. Do you still, you, 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 I see you don't wear the, the Lycra anymore. Do you ever bust no, it out I, for fun? Um, <laughs> if I was going for some like super duper long drive, maybe, but I can go out for five hours on the mountain bike with no chamois. I dare you. I dare you. The next enduro race, uh, uh, you, you, pull out i didn't wear one i didn't wear one at oak mountain when i saw you no you didn't no nah, i mean you were you shorts in your yeah you gotta think about the roadie the roadie days man i put in like fifteen thousand miles when you're recording uh, like on the books fifteen thousand miles in the saddle so like a mountain bike you're up and down all the time you have suspension like you uh -huh. people are softer than they need to be yeah like you gotta think about they were doing like the tour de france rides smoking cigarettes on single speeds <laughs> Just doing these crazy distances back in the day, and now we're like, "Oh, my, I need the plush, the plush, the plush, my butt." It's like, ah, oh, you got yeah, people are soft. <laughs> no, I'm saying you. Sh I, I dare you to to do the next enduro race in your full lycra. Ooh, Get, yeah, because that's the only way it works. I don't know if everybody yeah. understands that, yeah. but you can't wear the lycra yeah. and then cover it up with your clothes yeah, exactly. or have underneath underneath it because it's not what it's meant to do. It's not correct. So like. You're supposed to be full Lycra. The only thing you have on is that, <clears throat> and you have all your stuff in your pockets, and you look like you're ready for an XC race. Do you think it really helps? I mean, it does. 100. Why? Why don't we see? Why, why do you think we don't? I mean, I've never even even thought about it. Just coming to my head right now. Why? Why don't enduro riders? And is it because of the falls, like enduro yeah, riders I and mean, downhill riders? I don't. I don't think. See, the advantages like are so minsky or like. If you're doing an XC race or a road bike race and you're yeah. like, it's all about fitness and endurance, your body needs to wick the, it actually, the, the Lycra wicks the sweat off of your body. Yeah. So it's not sitting on you and it kind of dries with the air going across it. So that makes sense when you're on a road bike, you have a bunch of wind coming by you. If you're doing an XC race, you're averaging 15 miles an hour. The wind's blowing across you. 
you don't need it. But enduro, like that's a really thin amount of material to keep you covered up. But you, did you go to the World Cup? Uh, in no. Snowshoe XC. No, I didn't go. Oh, they I went watched. to a rock garden of hardtails and lycra. Yeah. That I know some of my friends would have gone through that fast. So, if you, I mean, it just your body stays cooler. Like it's a. If I were to race somebody on a mountain bike, I probably would wear the lycra. If I really wanted to press the time and commit, I'd wear a full face lycra and a knee brace. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends. If you're if you're going uphill, yeah. it's way better because you're you're like wearing a leotard. You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah. you're not sure you want to like wrestle somebody or do you want to go for five k? You know, you don't know. You don't know. But it definitely keeps you cooler, no doubt about it. That climb, uh, uh, we did the oak was it oak oak mountain enduro. That climb was yeah. insane. Man, you get you come to Pisgah, man. You're gonna have a whole other understanding about about pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah. You go to do some of these climbs, and you're for, you're you're 45 minutes of climbing with no break before you get to the top. And like, so it was worse. Man, it was gotta, it's worse than what we did at Oak oh, Mountain. 100. 100. percent Wow. No doubt about it. I, I mean, it was it was tough, but I still had it's fun. Nowhere in comparison, dude. Like I we went out with the guy yesterday. We took him up. Uh, <clears throat> We're going to do Buckwheat to Bennett. That's in Pizzia. And uh, by the time we got to the top of just the first climb, which I think is only like 700, 800 feet or something like that, he was like, oh, shit. And then there's another 700 feet worth of climbing. You're like on the actual trail. And then you go all the way to the bottom. And then we hiked up. We pedaled up and did Middle and Lower Black um, from Smoker's Cove. Yeah. And when we got to the top of that, we had to ask our people going by for snacks and nutrition for this guy. Jeez. Uh, bless his heart. But it's uh, it's different. It's different when you got to pay for so long. A lot of people don't get, like, when you don't have an option and you're in those bottom, like, three gears on your mountain bike mm-hmm. for an hour. Yeah. You don't have a choice. It's different. Yeah. And that, all the people see also on the on, on YouTube channels is the down part. They don't really experience the climbing. That's kind of where, you know, kind of I feel like, you know, it's a touchy subject for some people, but e-bikes, that's where that really starts kicking in, where e-bikes look really good. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of people out there that like the e-bike, and they don't want to admit it, and there's people that hate the e-bike, the elitist. Yeah. Um, I'm the type of person where there's I have an open seat at my table for anybody and everybody at all times. I don't do any discrimination on what bike you have, what you want to use, yeah. any of that. If you're willing to get out and ride and you are in good spirits and you want to go ride the downhill and we'll meet all up at the top, I don't care how you get there. I'm going to get an e-bike. Big shout out. I'm going to give a plug on your channel. If there's any e-bike companies out there that would like to see the big jump center on the e-bike, hit me in the inbox. Uh, my business information is out there. Uh, I'll hit big jump. Somebody send me an e-bike. And I'll go smash all the jumps at the river on an e-bike. You know, Sam Hill, is it Sam? Sam Hill does Sam it? Hildra. Yeah, Pilgrim. Sam Pilgrim. Sam Pilgrim does. He's man, <laughs> he, he's he's sick, dude, and he's a yeah. cool dude too. But like, he does he does some you know bunch of I mean backflips and crazy crap on on his e bike. But I haven't really seen anybody do some huge sins on on e bikes. Have, you seen, Jared? Have you seen Jared's place on Instagram when I did that? Uh, I did that insane private bike park mm, video. Yes, where there's a big janky ramp in the background. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on e bike. All the good riders there are on e-bikes. Really? Well, I mean, because so you're, you're, I mean, you're going back up. You're, you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Mm-hmm. But it, it'd be stupid not to have an e-bike on that. That's See, crazy. To how like you can't uh, national? It's a national forest. Yeah. Uh, you can't have an e-bike right now. But I've seen them out on the trail. Nobody says anything. It doesn't bother me. It's not like you got a motorcycle. Like because I got bad knees, and I'll tell you, one's in my future for sure. Um, I'm sure my knee is going to blow all the way out one day. Yeah. And like, I don't think, I don't think that anybody has the right to tell me that I can't go experience and do what I want. Cause you don't think I got there in the manner you see fit. It's like, you came here to pick up trucks. You can't come in this McDonald's. You can only come in a Prius. <laughs> you better only come in an electric car to this McDonald's. Bro. It gets so, so bad down here with e-bikes. Uh, just terrible. Some people are literally like e bike phobe yeah, you're they're like the antichrist of e-bike. Like that's the different thing. For like, real. Well, what about when people were like, I have a nine-speed. 
you crazy 12 speed users yes. you don't belong on the trail you're yes. 12 years you're making it too easy now with like, that you're you're on box you're you're doing what is that box components uh they uh have the what is it your your derailleur is uh your whole gear set. Uh, box it's box one it's box prime one. nine so they have prime nine box one two and three yeah. and uh a box four which is eight speed um i don't know a whole lot about that one but i'll tell you what i'm out here getting it breaking people off with nine speeds in Pisca. just just turn just just doing it to it see that works great same and thing I've with e-bikes they're just ticked huh? off. They're just ticked off that they're getting passed by and getting their butts handed to them because uh, they're 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 on an e-bike. You're on you're on this. Uh, what is oh, it? Ten, you said, yeah, it's just killing I'm on it. nine speed. Nine speed dude. shorts with no, with no chamois with a with a with a bro fanny pack with all kinds of snacks and repair yeah. stuff and two water bottles and a, a giant motocross knee brace and duro rider on a full bike. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, hey, what's, what's up, guys? What's up? <laughs> Is it a real fanny pack or is it is it one of the hip packs now? It's like a hip pack. It's like yeah. a, I think it's an Osprey. I have a Osprey. I have a Camelback hip pack, and I love that thing, dude. That's hip, like a hip or a backpack. A hip pack. Yeah, dude. I was trying to tell my buddy Handsome Rob. Long story. I got a friend that I call Handsome Rob, but um, he won't use the hip pack. And we're on this the ride I went on. He's just sweating profusely. His whole top of his body is so. That's why I like, get it. If you get, if you get a fanny pack. You won't sweat like that anymore. No. It's like you instantly stop sweating like that. It was a complete lifesaver when I switched to that. 100% just, agree. The sweat was just disgusting. I mean, oh. I, and I, I mean I'm mean, i on an old, I don't know how old my camel back backpack was. It's like early 2000s. But even then, something on your back, you're going to sweat. I love that. Oh, of course, Crankzilla, you're asking about my mullet. I didn't have a mullet. I had long, beautiful locks of hair, and they are now gone. You have you didn't see me with my long hair, Kevin, but I had super long hair. Oh yeah. Uh, by fr- Friday, I got it all cut off. I'm the wife thinks I'm way more attractive now, so. I think you are way more attractive now too. I appreciate that. Um, I do we can cuddle next time we see each other. Um, That'd be great. It's, I like um, chocolate, by the way. You like chocolate? Strawberries? Mm-hmm. I really like chocolate covered strawberries. But um, that's awesome. I like strawberry cobbler today. Strawberry cobbler. Dessert. I've okay. never had strawberry cobbler. I, I like uh, rhubarb cobbler and cherry cobbler. Mm, I Maybe. like uh, peach cobbler. Peach cobbler is good, too. Yeah, I've had peach cobbler. Have you had uh, cherry, what is it? Cherry, cherry dump cake. No. It's like it's cherry cobbler filling or whatever that stuff is. Cherry pie filling, that's what they call it. Then there's like a, a vanilla pudding on the bottom, and then there's a crusty sugar glaze on top of it, and that is completely mixed together. And it is heaven. It's amazing. I like to hear the bass in your voice. Do you like that? I used to be a DJ. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Where at? Um, well, these? It was a, I was a party DJ. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, it was... party going all the time. You know what I mean? There's yeah. always a party somewhere. Yeah, there's always a party somewhere. Yeah, that's what I was. But, yeah, that's awesome, dude. Well, um, I'm going to have to actually – you you showed me it at the Enduro race, your, uh, your box 9-speed, uh, and that thing – that looked awesome. I mean, having, having that less of speeds, you don't – you seriously don't need it. Is do, are, is the is the high gear just like the twelfth speed? Is it yep. just like uh, the granny gear? Granny gear range. That's so cool, dude. Um, I feel like the best part about it is that because there's less gears, it can be more reliable, and it's like there's more range for it to fall in each gear. Yeah. So I've done nothing to my derailleur since I got it put on in like the beginning of December, and like the only reason I'm gonna switch to box one, even if I even do it, like that's how much I believe in it. That like. I've got brand new box one to slap on there, and I have box two on my bike now, but it works fine. So, like, I'm not the person to just put something on that works great and just to replace it just because somebody gave it to me. Yeah. Um, like, I, I wrote a like, uh, do you remember Seth's video where uh, he had the airbag at my house for, for Thanksgiving in my front yard in my driveway? 
I don't remember like in the front. When Dave did the backflips. Yes. That was back your backyard? I thought sudden. that was his yard. No, that's my yard where he did that. Oh. Okay, um, yeah, I yeah. Tried oh, yes, 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 yes. I remember, yeah. I try to talk to Seth and do all kinds of stupid stuff. He only gives in sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's the one but, where uh, he, like, he did the backflip and the the ramp came forward. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it was a uh, it was pretty uh, pretty epic day. It was that. the sketchiest. <laughs> yeah, it it really wasn't that bad. I no. just to bring it back out. I'll be actually trying to get back out on that airbag with uh, the single track sampler probably yeah. next week, but we'll see. Yeah, I just saw the new video of uh, him completing the whole the whole berm. Yeah, peak I um I haven't done the whale tail. Yeah, and I haven't done Elmer Fudd. And he's building a new drop at his house. And it looks very aggressive. I like drops. I like drops. Yeah. What? Uh, I mean, drop, what's the biggest drop you've done? There's a. Do you ever? When you were in Florida, did you ever go to, over to Tallahassee to go Tom Brown? No. No. Okay. There's a. It's a. We, they call it the road gap. It's it's over a just a single kind of. It's not even single track. It's the gap itself is about five feet wide five feet yeah five feet wide and the drop is about five feet so whatever you want to call that a five foot drop or if you want to do the square yeah. root of whatever probably if it's theory. five by five it's like five by five step down, really. yeah it's more like a gator trail gap gator trail but, gap yeah because it's only five foot the lane's supposed to be 10 yeah and then two tens makes 20 if you're going to do like a real double road gap size and then you can do like the Red Bull drop, which is like 35 feet. So it's like a triple lane step down. There, all the step down drops and like road gaps, it's all about speed. You don't even yeah. need the skill. You just go really fast. You float off of it and you land. As long as you hold onto the bike and don't do anything crazy, you'll, you'll really clear all the drops. I'm going easy. to, uh, we're making a trip up north right, uh, here in a couple of weeks. And we're going to uh, um, Bentonville. We're going we're gonna to take a trip down to Bentonville and... I'm going to do drop the hammer. I'm praying I'm going to do drop the hammer. I so, have had dreams about that. So so what I did when I did that one is I didn't like the run up for that because it does like a U-turn, like a, a corkscrew yeah, U-turn yeah. to get to it. So I just, for for all purposes of just say I did it, I did do it from the trail. But when I did it for the first time, I actually walked up above it that was, yeah. was, it was just off trail, just where I straight run, and it was fine. You're just zooming. You're just zooming off of it, and it's fine. Yeah, that's the that's the part that's been sketchy to me is because it's an uphill U-turn climb. Yeah, to get to it, just don't do that. Just don't do that. Just go up the hill a little bit and roll straight at it. Don't don't make it more complicated than it has to be, especially if it's like the biggest jump you've done or drop. That's the, that's so. it, it. It will be the biggest drop I've done. That that yeah, but there's other ones there. Yeah, yeah, there is that are that are still. What's the what's the next step down? So the next step down is like, so you jump that one and then there's a step up and there's a little tiny step down and then another little step up. And then there's a, there's a mini hammer, the little hammers down below it. You can do that one. Yeah. And that one's like pretty simple. It's probably, that one's probably about the same gap as the jump you've already done. Okay. Like okay. a five by five kind of situation. I'm, I'm like really huge into drops. Like that's like, I don't know why drops are... You know, everybody's into jumping and all this kind of stuff. I'm, I want to look out for drops. I'm, I'm like seeing drops off on the side of the road. Everybody's like, I want to jump that. I want to drop that. Do you? Yeah. What do you want to like? What's the size drop you like to do? I, I just, just drops and period are super cool. Like that. I want to do drop the hammer. That's, that's a dream. Just to say I did that. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I mean, it's definitely a. I mean, that's definitely a road. You drive a truck through. That's like a real road gap. The yeah. Hammer. You can drive a car underneath it. That's it. Um, what about? Did you go to Santos? Did you ever do the D one, D two? I've done D one. I haven't done D two yet because uh, I haven't been back since I've actually gotten a little bit of skill <laughs> to to bike. I haven't been back and done that. But they've changed. They've changed it up. Uh, they filled it in. Yeah, and I'm not did. a big fan of that. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it, it allows you to be able to case it. And not case it. Not have to worry about that. I don't know. I think that you gotta have you gotta man up sometimes. Yeah. You know I mean, because what are you gonna do at the D two once they filled it in? 
Do you have you seen how big D three is? Oh yeah, yeah. D three is a D three is like an eighteen foot drop. It's a beast. Uh, is it really? I mean, it's like fourteen feet. I don't it's, know. It's but, pretty huge. So you got to go from like gapping over that wood on D two exactly, to like a man sized drop. Exactly, like a big drop. So now, that's why I don't like that. Drop the hammer. Drop the hammer is even smaller than D three, ain't it? It's like a ten oh, foot. It's, it's way easier. Way yeah, way yeah. easier. Like the the the, the hammer is like you could drop a side by side off of it. The the part of the trail that you're gonna do on D three is a stinking skinny. Like, you just roll off. It really skin. is, dude. It's like, boom. Yeah. And you have to do it slow too. Is the scary part. Well, and and then the uh, the landing in itself is literally. I mean, it's a it's a person height, and then you're on a flat. I mean, it's it's yep. the quickest. It's Sketchville. I don't I don't know. I don't really like. I've I've watched well, people do it, and in, it's just. If I, I know. You, you just claim you're into drops. I am to, into drops. Once you, to, once you go to Santos, you're going to have to do that now. You're going to at least do D3. you got to commit. Well, we'll uh, let me do drop the hammer, and then then we'll see. Yeah, drop the hammer is a high-speed one. Those are pretty yeah. easy. I don't know. It, it, the part that scares me the most is the skinny, is the wood, is the the, the launcher, launch pad. I agree. The, the setup setup's not the most perfect no i i don't like it and then there's right after that there's uh the there's they put a dirt jump and it's a huge dirt jump right in the middle between it oh where um so if you're if you're if you're right in the middle between d3 and d4 and d1 and d2 there's yeah. a huge tabletop right there yeah you should just send that hope for the best you hope for the best okay <laughs> just send it just go a little faster and don't touch the brakes. You know what I mean? Bro, there there has been some terrible mishaps lately since they created that. Like, bad. So, you have a confidence-building situation where now you have a step-down, which is the easiest jump you can do is a step-down. Yeah. And now you filled in the dangerous part, so now you got anybody and everybody hitting across it, and now you have, like, a 25-foot flat tabletop after it. People aren't ready for that. No, they're, they're like, not. It's all about progression and... If you don't have proper progression, people are going to get hurt. So, like, they need, like, they could have made that into, like, two separate jumps. They could yeah. have made, like, oh, yeah. a jump that went across, like, a long low. Like, they came down that. It would have been really cool to have, like, a small jump or, or like, a couple long lows where, yeah. like, you would fly across the field. You would skip, like, 20 feet at a time or, like, 15 feet. Or, like, exactly. They're, they're going to go 10 feet. And then the next one's going to be 15 feet. And the next one's 20 feet. Yeah. To, like, Amp it up. I think that's the important part. Jump should get bigger as the line goes, not just random huge this, monster it, it, collarbone. It's pretty decent size. I mean, I, I already know. I mean, it's big enough that it's hurting people, sending people to the hospital. So yeah, but I mean, you can trip over a, a a curb and be sent to the hospital. But it's it's to me, I'm terrible at jumping. Like I I said earlier, I'm terrible at dirt jumping, and it's just. Coming off, even sport. coming off of D one, uh, which is nothing. Coming off of D one, it's right there. Like you literally have to, right as you land, you have to put on the brakes and turn, turn your bike to the left, or you're going to send off of it. We we gotta we gotta bring you gotta get you up here and do some riding in Pisgah. Where like, Bro. you'll see like the na the natural trails up here. You're gonna yeah. walk into a drop like that, yeah. going 15 miles an hour blind, and you better figure it out. Like uh, <laughs> that's that's. I, a good Part of the terrain that's not even a feature i might not i might not come back i might you might not. i might just hey babe uh tell my wife i'm gonna move in with kevin i'm gonna be his third roommate and yeah we're just i'm just gonna ride and i don't think it's I, great <laughs> move the fam here it's great this is the pinnacle place for mountain biking yeah yeah i, I don't think she'd be super pumped about you're doing what with your mountain biking okay <laughs> <laughs> but so okay so Pis pisca is uh how far away are you from that that's like that's your that's your stomping ground eh yeah i'm um right here i live in fletcher now so pretty much right at the airport in Nashville where I live. okay and so i'm like 10 minutes from the riveter probably 20 minutes from mills river maybe even closer than that maybe like 25 minutes to pisgah Every, everything's like 20 minutes away really it's not as close yeah. here <laughs> do you do any uh traveling um for riding or anything like that? 
Or do you pretty I much stick around where you're as at? I, yeah, as much as I did last year, I don't do as much now because now I live here and everything's pretty close. I'm very much like if I travel, I travel to parks. So I'm going to go to like Windrock or I'm going to go to the beach. Um, I got a plan to go to Snowshoe. Anybody that hasn't been to Snowshoe Bike Park should totally go. Full I've family event. They um they have a lift, they have a lake, they got a beach. There's all kinds of stuff you can do while you're there uh, that you should definitely look into. I usually end up getting so many laps in that I don't even go play in the water in the lake because I'm so tired by the end of it. I just want to get a little daddy medicine and, and hang out and sit down. <laughs> that might hurt. What's your uh, What's your favorite place you have been though? As far as like any trail park? that you've hit, any trail that you've gone to and rode, what's been your favorite place? Uh, my favorite park as of right now, definitely snowshoe because they have like such an extended amount of like jumps after like really long or huge or whatever. They just have a lot of them. So that's really cool. And then trails wise, I really like, uh, the very raw trail, like ridgeline riding. Yeah. So I really like buckwheat to Bennett because you ride the ridge the whole time. And it's definitely very aggressive drops and stuff like that. Um, but Heartbreak Ridge, if I could shuttle Heartbreak Ridge, there's a really nice variety of riding and flow, like just enough tech on a flow trail that I really like it. But it's just so steep to climb that you need to shuttle it, which you're not yeah. allowed to do because that's illegal. Is uh, the infamous e-bikes allowed there? I, I don't know what you're talking about. I would never ride an <laughs> e-bike somewhere. Never. Never. Don't ever I'll break never your rules. That. We're not rule breakers. I'm a true elitist. Yeah, I follow every rule. If you guys haven't noticed, I always follow you, the rules. And, and you don't send it. You are very careful. <clears throat> you make I'm sure you look at your line. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm full on XC. I full got my XC. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a there's some drops. That, if anybody goes to Beach Mountain, they've got um, – they've got – they've built some landscaping on the right when you yep. have the lift just as a visual where they've stacked up like four different rock walls on top of each other. You're not supposed to ride that just for the record. Everybody was wondering, you're not supposed to ride that. Not supposed to, but it definitely looks like a really big step down yeah. or four different individual drops, um, off to the side. Just say, I don't saying. know if anybody got in trouble for doing that, but under the record, it, it. Kevin never told any of you all to send that. You never did. Yeah. Never, never said did. that. Okay. Never have said that. They're probably going to put some railing up, so everybody should do it before they make it where you can't do it anymore. No, no, don't don't get my channel in trouble. I didn't say it. Kevin said it. Not um, my so, channel. <laughs> not my circus. Not my monkey. <laughs> so, is that your? What's your favorite kind of riding with that? Is it? Do you do you enjoy the jumps? I know. I know you told me beforehand today. You just got done jumping today, doing some uh, dirt jumping. Is that what you're really into right now, or are you into tech, or? I would say I would be uh, into very aggressive riding. Like, I can ride it. You can make any trail really aggressive yeah. depending on how fast you go on it. So, what do you mean by aggressive? Just like, just balls like, to the wall? If there's a downhill section of riding and you could ride it at 15 miles an hour, yeah, I'm probably going to try to ride it at 20 miles an hour. So that I'm really pressing the limit of that trail and I'm testing my bike and yeah. I'm utilizing my downhill tires and my 160 millimeters of travel and my uh, coil You're pushing shock. the limits. You're pushing like the I'm, limits. That's how I want to ride. That's how I enjoy riding. I'm always riding out front. Some people don't like to ride blind. Yeah. I can ride blind almost as fast as I can if on trail I've been on before. Just trusting your bike you know i've got a good i got a good bike set up now and I trust my situation and it allows me to do things that are a little reckless but they're still in my wheelhouse because i'm really trusting and i know my bike very well my cane creek components are holding up amazing um max is tired running an ass guy in the front uh minion in the back i've cush cord in the rear um you like that ass guy really it's really a great tire with a lot of traction it's always been there for me turning and i haven't had an issue with it so mm. I'm, I stand behind the products that work and Max's tires work. I'm not sponsored by them. It's not a plug, but I wish I was. Um, but they just have really good tires that hold up and uh, good strong sidewalls. You know, nothing's worse than a flat tire. So I'll never get lesser of a tire to save on weight. Um, I'll just pedal it up and I'll still eat all the candy in the morning and still go for the bike ride. 
You, do you ride with the uh, EXOs or are you on double downs? <clears throat> double downs. Double downs. So you you really do take the the double sidewall. Well, the double. I think it's the XO up front. The acid guys the XO because the rear tire is what's taking the real beating. And I have a forty one mi- forty one forty one millimeter wide carbon box wheels, mm-hmm. and I run a twenty seven five plus push core in with a two point six tire. So. It's pretty chunky back. It's pretty fat back there, but I can run whatever PSI. Like when it's like in my front tire, I'll run if it's wet and it's loose. I'll run 20 PSI, and then in my rear, I'll run like 25, and I don't have any problem. Yeah, so. that's about the same thing I do, except I'm 23 and 23 pretty much the most of the time. That's that's cool. Makes me feel a little better. I'm like fat how, too, I, though. I don't like how the you know what you should try going up a little bit in your back tire, like 25, 26. And it'll take away some of that rolling resistance. Yeah. And you'll roll a lot faster. And climbing won't be so bad because you won't be squishing into that tire. But do you feel the traction going away at that? All, all, the, all day. You still you feel it. Trust okay. it. It's, it's really, I think your traction comes a lot into play with your foot position when you need the traction for that type of turn. And when you think about the traction and the tire pressure, you're steering with your front tire. So you should brake very little with your front tire so you can steer better. And then you can drag the rear brake and find the traction and keeps you on the trail when you need it by just some modulation. So that's okay. how I do it. Everybody has a different style. but That's cool. Yeah. I, I, repeat that again. Did you say – because I think you're I think you were saying opposite of what I what I led to believe. So you, if you brake with your front wheel, you lose steering. Does that make correct. sense? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Front, okay. That's that's correct. Front is for slowing you down. No. No. Front no. is for steering. Front. I thought you said if you Mm-mm. brake front with your front. So like, if you're if you're like heavy braking, yeah, I'll get to a point in my brakes where I'll lock in like fifty percent front brake, and then won't do any more than that because I'm going to lock into that speed because I need my steering. Because if you jack the front brake, you're plunging into your suspension, and now you're preloading up your suspension before you even hit anything because you're braking. And that's what's holding you up. So if you can take the weight off of the front, less braking, let the, the flow of the shock work better where there's no weight on it. And then maybe over the back wheel, you can drag the rear brake to kind of lock you in, especially if it's like a little chattery and bouncy. Yeah. Leave the front open so you can steer. Pull a little bit back so it'll pull, it'll drag it. It pulls it in when you put a little brake on it. So you don't, you don't, you don't think uh, pulling the brake to change, to change directions is the rear brake. It's definitely rear brake because realistically when the turn happens, a lot of people have braking issues because they go into a turn worried about that turn. Yeah. I don't go into turns worried about the turn I'm in. I go into a turn trying to get me into the next turn. Yeah. So like that's just a different kind of style of riding. But, you know, straight line is the fastest line. So if you can maintain a higher uh, average speed through the trail, you're going to be faster no matter what. So. You know, don't always ride in the middle of the trail where the tread and everybody else rides. If you mm-hmm. got to ride up on the bank, do it. If there's drops in the trail, just run it out. Roll the dice and ride the edge where there's like six inch variations in the ground versus two two foot or one foot variations, and just ride the edge of it. Let the bike slide and just go from one side to the other, so you can get up on the edge where nobody's ridden, and yeah. then you can hop into that turn and turn when you need to. A lot of the trail building is going to be a lot of things about how entering turns is a lot different. How if you look at a turn, next time you go to the trail, try this. Okay. When, if you find a berm and you're like, ah, oh, what's up with this berm? What's up? What's the deal with this berm? It's not running quite right. Go go up to the berm in the turn and put one arm, put your arms at a 90 degree. I don't know if you can see what that, like, you know, I, I left, see what you're saying. straight yeah, yeah. and right. Okay, and please. point down the trail. Yeah, there you go. I guess this would make more sense. There you go. That rather than using my whole arm. <laughs> so when you do that, that'll be the apex of your turn. Okay. You can point out the turn. Yeah. And you go 90. That's the, that's the apex of the turn that's happening um, that you're coming out of. So if you're going this way, the berm needs to start here, and then you're gonna, your, your actual momentum and snap of the turn needs to happen one time to go out this way. Okay. So a lot of people go into the berm too low. What you need to do is start the berms and start, start high. Start as high as you can get so that you can come use your momentum shooting out of the berm rather than being in the top of the berm when you come out. Keeps, your, the keeps your speed up, your momentum yep. up. Okay, mm-hmm. that's so, so brilliant. I didn't know and you were. Did you know the, suspension? the suspension set up for high speed, and that's why racers do that. 
the suspension that we have on our bikes is so advanced and so high tech. It comes yeah. from like the off-road motocross scene. Yeah. So the suspension is set up to work under high speed hits. It's not meant to do XC. I'm going to go through this little section here at five miles an hour. It's meant to go through there at 10 miles an hour. If you can hold back from hitting the front brake, if you can flow with it and stay off the back of the bike, the suspension works the best when you're really working it. You know, like your suspension, I, that's why a lot of racers have their suspension that's set up real tight because that's when they'll be utilizing it. They'll be going all the way through that stroke under high speed and needs to work real fast and not pack up. I think it's yeah. like a misconception of suspension setup versus what you need versus what actually works. You are. I take my feelings out of it. And I just want it to work. That is insane. I've never even thought of it that deep. That's sick. For sure. Have a, have a pro set your bike up. They're going to set your bike up so stiff, you're not going to like it. And then yeah. you get used to it. Suck it up. So you're saying have it stiffer than. Than you think. Okay. Like a lot of people. So I run a coil in the rear because I don't like the sag in the rear. I don't want to feel my uh, full suspension bike with pedal bob. Yeah. So I have. Uh, my damper half shut and i run a 500 to 610 progressive coil from cane creek yeah and if anybody wants cane creek stuff you can use steady spin promo code and you get 20 percent off which is like a black friday sale discount sweet um and then the front fork i run it at 20 percent sag versus 30 percent sag so now i'm wow. sitting higher in my suspension so when i do take big hits it ramps up a little bit more for me and i can feel it better yeah i've, I've heard of I, for a while there when i first when I first got a full suspension bike, I was running 25%, percent, twenty percent, even more than that. That's insane. What you, I mean, what are you are you taking the big hits? I mean, not to like call you out, but if you're running your bike at that and you're only doing five foot drops, man, you could you could run it even oh, I, oh, I can do it. I can do I can do a lot more. Uh, my skill level compared to my bike setup is just stupid. I just have to get over sure. it. It's it's yeah, lir- so it's just, it's literally just mine. Yeah, keep stepping it up. They'll see that like you can do a lot more. Like I would like to have. They're starting to come out with these uh, a down country bike. So it's a uh, an all mountain geometry with only like 120 and 100 millimeters of travel. And I'm super yes. excited about that. I think I do a lot with that. I've started hearing more about that down country, and I, I've told a couple of my friends. Actually, Robert Taylor is one of my buddies. Uh, talking about that Robert down. Robert Taylor's in here. Robert Taylor. His, I call him Trey. He's uh. Yeah, I was talking about uh, uh, the whole down country. That's a that's a super cool cool setup with that. Being able to send stuff that's such a small uh, movement of a uh, you know small suspension setup. That's that's pretty cool. Well, I think it's the geometry is what it is. Yeah, it's yeah. not like that. You need the travel. You just need to feel like you're in the cockpit mm-hmm. rather than like over the front of the bar. Yeah. So, I mean, I got this, I just got, I got, oh, I've had it, this slope style bike, but I just put downhill brakes on my slope style bike and I'm going to go take a trail riding on 26 inch wheels, hundred millimeter travel front and back. Yeah. And I think I could ride places like DuPont with it. If really? I get a long enough seat push rocker, yeah. um, I think I definitely could. And like, I don't really need, you know, like after your skill set goes up X amount, I mean, you see these people riding, you know, I don't know who that guy's name is, but he rides like a gravel bike at, at uh, Whistler doing giant jump lines with it like i haven't seen once that. your skills that you need less and less suspension than you need you know, like the downhill bikes when they're racing downhill bikes dude they're going a speed that you just can't fathom yeah like i'm not the most amazing rider i'm not the most competitive time person but when we they got on these mountains like wind rock and they do a race run they're coming in at like 2 30 and i'm coming in at like four minutes yeah. like is crazy amount of speed and risk they're taking and they do need all that suspension they do use it all and like they're clapping those things and like there's just i give it to the downhill guys for what they do and what they risk and like it's just such a gamble yeah like the downhill bike amps things up like it gives you so much more confidence but then you get getting so much more trouble too yeah yeah exactly well you just you just you, up the level you're going faster now, uh, I was about to ask the same question. Brandon um, Brandon over here is asking if I lock out the front sh- – front, if I lock out my shock and fork, um, would I have more pop on jumps? So, it's not about locking the fork out because then it makes it rigid. 
Yeah. What I would try doing is, Brandon, do you have a climb switch or do you have a damper switch or what is your rear shock? Because that kind of makes a difference. So with the jumping, uh-huh. what I would do is I would speed up the rebound so that you're not absorbing as much of it and it's going to be a little sharper. But if you have a coil, you have a damper and you can shut that off so your stroke doesn't happen as fast. So it depends on what you have. But I, I, I wouldn't... If you have a coil, you can shut your damper, but if you have air, you really don't want to lock it out and like blow your piston. So only halfway on the rear if you have air. And then the mm-hmm. front, you also can do halfway. Yeah. Um, but you don't want to lock it out just in case you blow out some of those seals. And I don't think people, I don't know how often people actually service their suspension, but you don't want to blow your seals because then you use your lubricant. And that's like when your stanchions start looking unlubricated. Um, you're starting to have that performance issues and it just won't be as smooth. So he's saying he has a, uh, he's saying he has an air shock with switch. He was, he was actually also saying he upped the air spring from 160 to 170. I'm thinking it's his front uh, fork. Uh, I'm thinking it was a mistake now. So he's got an air shock with a, with a switch. So hold on. He said he upped it to 160 to 150. He that doesn't the air spring from 160 to 170. Okay. So, so it does the air spring there. Uh, you, if you up the air spring, then you can let some of the air out. Now you're compensating by that pressure in there. I'm not a suspension tech. I'm not saying I know what I'm talking about. I didn't go to school. I've learned this just from my experience. But um, how is the there's an air spring inside of his there's a there's a spring inside of his air shock. Well, don't you call it? Don't you call that an air spring? Well. You, the air springs in there because you have like a is the i feel like some people have a coil fork and I, yeah. like i always want to make sure people know if you have a coil fork or an air fork because like my downhill bike was a coil um domain and you could change out the springs for like a soft medium hard yeah 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 and you can mess with the rebound i think you still call the, it an air spring though if it's an air spring. shock okay. if it's an air shock i still think uh i still think it's the air chamber the air spring chamber is different because then like i thought if you switch that you'd be switching the amount of travel you have inside yeah that, that's point. what i think he's doing so like i'm not i don't know what that would do i run 30 front i'm trying to read this information where he replied and i don't see a reply i don't understand know. but i don't think you should lock it out if you have a coil in the front you should ramp up your rebound switch real quick but if you have air i would if you're having trouble with it I would um, add air to it while you're jumping, maybe like five PSI, or just close it out halfway on the fly. And then in the rear, um, if it's air, I wouldn't shut it all the way off. I would just limit it in half. And what that does is it's not going to absorb as much as your input into the jump. and But then your bike won't be as responsive in a way. Cool. So it's going to slow down the energy you're putting into the back of the bike. We just got real technical and... I'm just. Do we I, lose some? Do we, do we lose some viewers on this? Actually, we gain. <laughs> actually, we gain some viewers, so it's okay. Um, so off subject now, off to a easier subject. Uh, sure. Gavin Guthrie is asking on a scale from one to ten, how hard is Berm Peak? Obviously, I mean, I want this to be about you. I don't want it to be about Seth, but <laughs> everybody's gonna I'm ask. So, I'm so I'm so used to it. Every time I go somewhere, everybody <laughs> thinks that like. I'm just going to take them over to Seth's house. Or I'm just going to call Seth and be like, hey, hey, bud. Hey, can you drop everything you're doing and just head over here? Why don't here you go ahead and get him on the quick? phone? I'll interview him real quickly. Yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> just get him right now. Let's just get him on the phone now. Um, uh, no, Burn Peak is much. What happens is you don't get a warm-up to go to Burn Peak. And that's the difference. Like Everybody, they, that's the biggest thing with progression. There's a lot of people that want like a really large warm-up before they do anything crazy. And there ain't no warm-up. Mm-mm. Your first feature is going to be the pucker it, plank okay, to yeah. the whale tail, or you're going to do a long low to an airbag, or you're going to the mainframe. Oh. Those are your options. So you know, like, people are saying that mainframe is doesn't look as bad. That looks terrible to me. It sucks. Yeah. It sucks. It sucks because it's like a turning uh-huh. off. It's like a turning skinny, slow tech feature that you have to roll into fast to have momentum over it, and like. It's it's really it's a nonsense feature. That's does it a lot force of you to turn nonsense. your? Does it force you to turn? Like does it force your front tire to turn left? 
Only if you're going slow. Oh, if you're going slow. Okay. So if you're going slow, you're going to find out real quick how your wheel can turn left on you. Oh, jeez. Like flat. <laughs> that sucks. So the more momentum you have, the easier it is to keep those wheels straight instead of turning. Um, Samuel Hensley is asking, uh, Steady, have you checked out the new pump and jump tracks at Baker Creek? I have not because uh, I saw a lot of people riding those before they opened, and I uh, have rep- I have a duty as a representative of somebody that does put content out to not ride things before they're open. I don't want to set an example that you should go ride things before they're open. There's a lot of reason why they're not open yet. They had to put more seals on it or whatever's going on. Now, if other people were riding it, like it was open and I showed up, I would be probably victim of following following the, the crowd, you know. Um, but, for example, I went to Beach Mountain, and the road gap was closed. It was taped off. And I was like, I'm not going to untape it. And then when I went back behind the lift, people were, had untaped it and hit it. And I was like, oh, I'm so mad that I didn't go to those people. But I'm not going to be the one to undo the tape. Yeah. You, you're not going to do that. Just like you're not going to go off the those boulders, right? Yeah, that never had that never I never got yelled at by Speed Patrol. Oh. I always get yelled at by them. There's just one lady at Beach that she probably doesn't even realize I'm the same person, but she always catches me doing something wrong. <laughs> always. And she knows always it's in like you. a full She knows it's you and she thinks you're cute. She's always in like a full on beach mountain, um, like uh mountain patrol. She's got a jersey and the walkie talkie and she's like every time, but she has no idea that she's yelling at the same person, so I guess I just That's get hilarious. away with it. That's hilarious. Now I changed shirts too to make sure I can get away with more stuff <laughs> during the ride. <laughs> that's uh, well, that's, that's terrible. Everybody. That's terrible. Change helmets and then change shirts, and you're like a different person. <laughs> or give it to your buddy and make him get in trouble. <laughs> that works too. So this went by so stinking fast. You know, we do an hour and it's it's already at nine fifty seven. Um, I like to finish up the stuff with um, kind of listening to what your – do you have a closing closing remark you give at the end of your videos? I do, and it's a really good piece of advice for progression since what I'm all about. And it's going to be pedal a little harder and don't touch the brakes. So I think it's great advice, and everybody should try it if they're trying to do progression and learn stuff. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, um, I'm going to get one more question uh, and uh, we just got one more popped up. Um, uh, Kevin, what do you ride when you want when you want to go out ride all day? Fun on fun flow trails. What do you what do you I guess what do you ride all day on flow trails? So all all day, all day is an interesting concept. So unless you're gonna do laps, you don't really have like an all day thing. So like. Like, if I had a choice to ride all day, like I did uh, yesterday, I like a combination of, like, flow trail and tech trail. So if, if anybody would up for it, I would love to go get some, like, nice flowy runs in DuPont. Like, a couple – there's a lap I can do in DuPont that takes, like, 35 minutes. It would be cool to do, like, two of those laps, get a snack, get rested, and then go over to Pisgah, and then maybe go run um, – middle lower black or if i have the legs to do it go do a uh, buckwheat to bennett i mean that's definitely my favorite trail because it's super rowdy and like there's holes and like you can get tangled up and it's one of the trails i that's like i was saying about the riding thing a lot of people go straight down the trail but i can make really good time by staying on the edges of the trail and like riding the spots that nobody are riding and have a really good time so what bike uh, what bike are you riding that on right now are you, are you still in the bronson yeah, I'm on the Bronson for sure. Um, I don't have any contracts or any uh, anything going on with a new bike brand or a newer version or anything like that. I love it. I have nothing but great things to say about the Bronson, um, about Santa Cruz in general, their warranties. Anybody knows had an issue, they warranty it. Even if you like did some kind of crazy wild stuff to it, those give you a crash replacement pricing, which is still like crazy warranty. Any, any company that stands behind a warranty, they crash it, crash replacement warranties. Um, I stand behind their product, so... That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I've I've only heard good good stuff from from Santa Cruz. Mm-hmm. That's super cool. And that's well, straight consumer. I didn't get any yeah. discounts or any sponsorship yeah. or anything from them. So that's awesome. The best the best kind. Well, dude, mm-hmm. Kevin, I appreciate you so much for uh, 
coming on to uh, my channel, onto my uh, podcast, live stream, whatever you want to call it, and having yep. fun. I had a blast. Thanks, everybody, for showing up and asking questions, getting to know Kevin. I posted his uh, link down below. Go check him out. Um, he's got a huge channel of some pretty awesome stuff of him just sending it. Um, he likes to send it blind. So go check him out. Give him some support. Um, if you if you want to go check him out, he's got some uh, pretty sketchy stuff he likes to send. So and especially the one where you got your pants taken off from the the jump. That, That's where everybody knows me. Everybody from. knows like, you from. Everybody that. knows that video. You're the dude that got his pants ripped off, aren't you? Every time, every time <laughs> I go somewhere, that time I remember me. I'm like, I've done all kinds of other stuff to you guys. That's awesome. Not. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you actually have a good channel. You actually have a good channel, especially with the flames that come up. That's my favorite part at the beginning of the. Of the oh, I, I quit doing that. I quit doing that intro. I noticed I, you did. I should I get a new intro? Dude, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I thought that part. Hey, you you've grown this much with that. I don't I don't I don't care. I think it's hilarious. I think it's awesome. I just think you're flaming now. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, like I say every single time, guys, make sure you lift up God, lift up life, lift up the adventure, get out there, make your own adventures. Go and check out Kevin's from Steady Spin. Go check his channel out, and uh, we will see you guys next time on Jeremy's pedal power hour see you guys god bless i love this part and i have to press end and end and it still doesn't end and that's going to be in the recording <laughs>